Hi everybody, thank you for joining the Dr. Monique May Show. I am your host, Dr. Monique May, your board certified family physician, home cook, kitchen gadget junkie, who you know as the physician in the kitchen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about ways to get ready for back to school. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been traveling. A lot of you all know I was on vacation in Dubai, which was amazing, um, and then was away last week. So back to the swing and the swing of things now. Um, hopefully your summer is still going on wherever you are. Um, we are pretty much winding down. My son started school on Monday. So summer is officially over for us, or maybe not officially, but getting there. So getting back into school habits, getting ready for the work and school week, um, got me thinking about what I was gonna talk to you all about tonight. And lo and behold, and getting ready and thinking about that, I looked down at my, or looked at my Consumer Reports magazine. Yes, I actually have a physical magazine. I'm old, older school, I should say. And I like books and magazines. So I actually have a paper subscription. Who still is doing that? I don't know, other than me. But this, on the cover of this month's um, issue, if you can see that, it says Bake Off, slow cookers, air fryers, and pressure cookers. And oh, before I forget, be sure to share this with your friends, tag friends, um, and follow me, um, and be sure to share this so we can keep the conversation going. So this, I thought was very timely, because I said, well, you know, I wanted to talk about back to school, meal prep, things that make it easier so that you can spend less time in the kitchen. We all are very busy and we have our two lives, right? We have our work lives where we're running the show or working hard or serving our community or whatever it is we're doing outside of our home. And then we have our home life where we are moms and wives and significant others um, and have to sometimes juggle getting uh, food on the table in a quick, easy manner. So I wanted to talk to you about how to do that. And the key thing is to have some good tools so that you can work smarter and not harder. So, joining me later, we will have some celebrity guests. But first, I'm going to talk to you about um, some things that were in this in this um, issue in this article. So, we're going to talk about five appliances. One, two, three, four, five. That if you have them, you can use that will help to make things go quicker and easier in the kitchen. And yes, I have four of them. I'm on the fence about the fifth one, but I probably will break down and get it. Um, and the one that I actually do not have is a multi-pot. Um, they're known by different names, but basically they are a combination. They, these things do everything. <laughs> um, you can bake in them, you can slow cook, you can pressure cook, you can make yogurt in it, um, you can um, saute your meat in it so it was one pot meal so that if you're having to instead of having to dirty up another pot to brown your meat you can just do it in the same pot and then start the slow cooking process so these are great if space is limited counter space is limited um, and you just don't want a lot of stuff in your kitchen you might want to invest in one of these so from what i understand these are great um, you can even like make rice in it or oatmeal so anything that you would do um, in a slow cooker or pressure cooker um, you can do in these multi pots. So, um, as again, I don't have one myself, but something tells me I probably will end up getting one soon. <laughs> um, my other favorite, or my favorite, or one of my favorites, is um, a toaster oven. So, this is just basically a countertop toaster oven. We all know the toaster ovens, they've been around forever. Um, but again, these are very flexible and serve a lot of purposes. You can warm up food in them. Um, I use mine to broil fish because it doesn't take very long. Um, all kinds of things, grilled cheese and, and other things that you're making. Um, I like to use mine because my oven takes a while to warm up. And little story, um, my oven, and I don't know if you all have had this experience or not, but I would bake a cake according to the time and the cake wouldn't be done. It'd still be wet or not set in the middle. I'm scratching my head, what's going on with my oven? Why is my cake not baking? So after a couple of ruined cakes, <laughs> I finally did some research and I came across an article that recommended that 
I checked the thermometer, or excuse me, checked the temperature of my oven. Lo and behold, my oven was not true. And the way I found that out was um, I invested in this handy oven thermometer, which as you see has served its time, it's even cracked, and, but that's okay. That means it's, it's been put through the paces. And what I do is I just leave this in the oven. And so say I'm setting the oven for 350, the display on my oven will say that it's at 350 after like five minutes. There's no way, and I have a gas oven. There's no way my oven is 350 after five to 10 minutes, but the display will say that it is. My handy dandy thermometer will say it's not even 200. So it takes my oven about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to get to 350. So think about it. If I'm going by the display and it's saying it's at 350 and I put my cake in the oven, 30 minutes later, I'm expecting a baked cake. And lo and behold, it is not because that 350 doesn't didn't start until this says it's 350. So if you're having that problem where you feel like your food is just not getting done like it's supposed to in the time, get an oven thermometer and just check and see if your oven is what they call true or not. So in the 20 minutes it takes for me to warm up food, or for, excuse me, for my oven to warm up, I can be using my toaster oven and broil um, fish, which takes, you know, not even 10 minutes. So, and in the summer when it's hot, you don't want all that extra heat from your oven. So a toaster oven is a really, really nice, quick and easy um, appliance to have for that. So next we're gonna talk about um, a slow cooker. Slow cookers, everybody knows those as crock pots. You see those at office potluck dinners often. Um, but everybody has either seen or had a dish made in a pot in a slow in a slow cooker or crock pot. Um, so this again, easy. You can set it in the morning if you have the digital ones. Uh, put all your ingredients in one pot. You get home, dinner is done, and it you know it doesn't get easier than that. It's great for making stews and chili and even um, grits. I made some in my grit, some grits in mine one time and they were delicious, I never knew. So slow cookers are good as well. Next we have um, the pressure cooker. And so we kind of touched on that a little bit when I talked about the multi-pot, but a pressure cooker is also um, an instrument that's good for getting food, especially like tough like meat, cuts of meat that you want to tenderize pretty quickly, a pressure cooker is great. I'm somewhat known for my oxtails. And hey, Tasha, um, thanks for joining. I am known for my oxtails, and that's my secret weapon. I just put them in, yes, pressure cookers are great. Um, and I feel like a grown woman. When I got my first pressure cooker, I really felt like I, got, like I was grown. Um, that and my stand mixer. I really felt like I had come into my own when I got those two appliances. Because <laughs> who has a pressure cooker? Like just laying around. Because grown people, right? So um, the time that it would take that you might want to cook meat, say in your slow cooker, 10, 12 hours or in your oven, um, pressure cooker gets it done in an hour, hour and a half. And they also can be used for lots of other things. I, being the nerd that I am, did a little online search just to see all the things that could be done in a pressure cooker. And I was amazed. It's not just for meat. You can do vegetables. You can do seafood, um, fruits, grains, oatmeal, all kinds of things in a pressure cooker. And, and so, of course, you vary the time based on what it is. But I didn't. I never thought about that. I always thought that pressure cookers were more for meat, but they really have a lot of use in different across different types of food groups. And then that brings me to the air fryer. Anybody who's been watching me lately knows I have just gone completely over the moon with my air fryer. This air fryer slash dehydrator slash um, oven slash slash slash. This thing does a lot of stuff too. So recently, I've been using mine to, I'm starting to experiment making some potato chips out of sweet potatoes and other, um, uh, sweet potatoes and, and Yukon gold potatoes. So that's still a work in progress, but I'm working on it and it's fun. So I have made croutons in my air fryer, the dehydrator, using the dehydrator aspect of it or feature of it. Um, I've made my own apple, dried apple rings. Delicious, delicious. 
So lots of different things. These air fryers, you can basically fry without grease. So you can make fried chicken. Um, I use mine to make french fries. I do my own, it's got a rotisserie aspect so I can make my own rotisserie chicken. Um, so no, I'm not buying stuff from the store anymore. I just make it, just make it at home. And I have fun doing it with all these new gadgets that are, that are available. So air fryer is a good one. I got one for Christmas. My dad bought me one for Christmas and it is like the best gift ever. I have used that thing so much. Um, yeah, and you can do a lot. I mean, you can do, hey, Shimana, thanks for joining. Um, you can do, if you're into beef jerky, if you can, um, you can make a pizza in it. I mean, it's like a lot that can be done. So um, it's good. And if you want to keep, keep it simple, instead of using your microwave, if it's bread or pizza, some stuff that doesn't really always warm up well in the microwave, you can either use a toaster oven for that or the air fryer feature as well. So again, there's some overlap in some of the stuff this, these things do, but the bottom line is they are meant to make your life easier. So next we have a food processor. Last but not least, I can't say enough about my food processor. I kind of realized <laughs> that I had a food processor. I didn't, I didn't realize I had a food processor until I was talking with my mom one day and I was like, yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna buy a food processor. And she's like, what are you talking about? You've got one. I'm like, what? So sure enough, I dug it out. I had never used the thing before. I didn't even know what it was. It must have been a gift from someone. I don't know. And love it. Love, 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 love it. So a food processor is good for processing food. <laughs> but what I use it for is you can make um, salsa in it, pico de gallo, anything that needs to be kind of um, processed or chopped and if you want to mix it together. I use it to make pesto. I love pesto. Um, and so pesto is pretty easy to make. It's just five ingredients. You've got basil leaves, pine nuts or sunflower seeds if you're allergic, olive oil, garlic, parmesan, a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Um, put that in the food processor and it's just and but you can you can play with it. I've made arugula pesto, pe pesto, arugula pesto, and but with that one you want to not add any extra black pepper because the arugula has a peppery taste to it. So don't make the same mistake I made when I added pepper to it before tasting it. But you can do you can make anything into a pesto, and with a good food processor, it's super duper easy. The other thing I like to make with it is my own hummus, hummus. Um, I actually used to work with a guy from Iran and I made some and took it to work and he told me that that was like some of the best hummus he'd ever had. Now, he could have just been, you know, humoring me, but I think he was telling the truth if I do say so myself. Um, but again, having a good food processor really makes it easy and I make the whole thing from scratch, even the tahini paste, which is the basis of the hummus. And it's basically just sesame seeds that you toast over a low flame. And then once they're cooled off, put those in your food processor with some olive oil, process that till it's like a paste. And then you add in your chickpeas, garlic, uh, more olive oil, um, and process that down into a hummus. Um, and then when I'm feeling fancy, I make a roasted red pepper hummus where you just roast the red peppers till the skin is uh, nice and charred and peels right off. And then you put that in the food processor until it's nice and velvety. And Sabra ain't got nothing on me, let me tell you. So those are just some of the things I like to do with these kitchen gadgets or appliances. But again, really just want to kind of make you aware of what's out there. Some tools that you may not have in your armamentarium as we get ready to take on the school year and be productive and efficient in meal prep. So I mentioned that I had some celebrity guests, so what show would be complete without celebrity guests? So since I spent a little time talking about them, I'm going to show you my appliances. I mean, y'all really didn't think I had like Michelle Obama or Beyonce, did you? So this is my pressure cooker. So it looks kind of big, you know, things in the mirror appear larger than they uh, <laughs> than they are. But this one actually is a pretty big, a uh, good size one. Because it got to the point I was making oxtails and my dad is just like an oxtail fiend. And so it got to the point where I, the batch I was making just wasn't enough. So I, I, I outgrew 
the pressure cooker I had, which was probably about half the size, and I had to upgrade to the big mama. So this can be used as a regular pot. That's it. You can, you, know, you can use it as a regular pot. There's nothing really fancy in there. The magic happens in this. Um, I'm forgetting the name for this, but there's a name for this um, rubber ring. But this is what helps along with the, the features in the lid that helps to let the pot come to pressure. Um, and then that's when the cooking starts. That's when you start the clock. And the, the cool thing about the multi-pots with the digital displays is that it tells you when it's now under pressure. And then that's when the cooking time starts, once the pot is fully pressurized. Old school, if you're old school like me, you have to wait till this little yellow button pops up. And that's when you know it's under pressure and then you start counting that's that starts your cook time so anyway that's my big old lady pressure cooker but it has gotten a lot of good use but I fear that it may get replaced by a multi-pot I don't know we'll see um, the other celebrity guest that I have is my food processor so this is what I use to make I hope you guys can see this um, I used to make the hummus and pesto. So this is the working bowl that you use for most of the stuff that you do. It does have a smaller bowl if you don't have as much to process, but I usually just use um, the big one because that's just how I roll. But that's usually what I need to process what I'm doing. So food processor, oh, and here is, I'm gonna take a little walk. And here is the toaster oven, right? So everybody knows what toaster oven is. Nothing real fancy there. But as you can see, it's got a lot of different uh, features, a lot of different options, and then you can, um, that you can use to, depending on whatever you're making. And then last but not least, we're gonna come over here to the air fryer. And I just love it. It's so pretty. It's red. As you notice, I have some red accessories in my kitchen. So, you know, my dad did a good job, right? I mean, he gets father of the year for picking this out for me. But this is the air fryer. And so inside, I've got the racks. And this is what I use to make the um, uh, croutons and the potato chips that are still a work in progress and the apple rings anything that I want to dry out I'm gonna put on these rings hey Kim thanks for joining the other feature is this is the air fryer so the basket so when you want to make uh, French fry, uh, excuse me fried chicken or anything that you want to fry without using oil this is your basket that you use and this handle of course comes off so you can put it in there but this is so that you can handle it when it's hot and then the other really cool feature is this basket. So it's a fry basket. So I can make french fries or if I cheat and use store-bought french fries, I just put them in here and there's a top and then it spins, it rotates and they're nicely and evenly cooked. And then the rotisserie, I mentioned that I make my own rotisserie chicken. This is it, you have a spit pretty much and you um, thread it through the chicken after you truss it, truss them, um, tie up those legs so it's not in the wings so they're not falling all over the place. And then in here is where it hooks in and then that spins. So you take all these out and you attach it in there and then it just spins and rotates. And then I have rotisserie chicken. How cool is that? So that is my um back to school appliance uh walkthrough or tutorial and so that is what we're going to start to use as we talk more about meal prep and planning and how to get flavorful delicious meals on the table in a short amount of time so be sure to tune in next week. I'm going to be doing part two where we'll talk about some more instruments and gadgets that we can use in this process. Um, in the meantime, follow me, Dr. Monique May. I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn at Dr. Monique May. That's D-R-M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-M-A-Y. Um, in the meantime, have fun, eat well, 
and tune in. See you back next time in the kitchen. Good night.